Hi, this is John and Ian with Performance Plus Tennis. And there's been a lot of conversation about Serena Williams being the GOAT in recent years. And this video is all about, is Serena really the GOAT? And we're going to review some of the other greatest women players of all time, do a little comparison and contrast. And then in the end, we're gonna give you our opinions. And uh, I think you'll be a little bit surprised. So welcome to today's video. So I, I think what we should do first is talk about Margaret Court, who really is Serena's biggest comparison. And uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with Margaret Court, she was a great Australian player, played predominantly in the 60s, had a phenomenal career. Phenomenal. She won 64 yeah. Grand Slam titles combined between singles, doubles, and mixed doubles. 24 singles, Grand Slam singles titles that Serena has been pursuing for some time. And that is a phenomenal record. And she has other phenomenal records in her overall winning percentages and so many things. And uh, you certainly remember Margaret Court playing Absolutely. as well, right? Yeah, yeah, phenomenal. But, you know, I look at that and, and I, a couple of things about Margaret Court's record, which is really phenomenal, okay? 11 of her 24 Grand Slam singles titles were won at the Australian Open. Huh. And only 11 of her, or I should say, but 11 of her Grand Slam titles were won in the open era of tennis. So before the open era, amateurs and professionals had to play a part. Pros could not play in the Grand Slam events. Correct. So when she won 13 of her titles, she was playing against other amateurs. And all, yeah. Right? And, right. A, and right. 11 of those Grand Slam singles titles were won in Australia. Right. Nobody went. Nobody went. <laughs> Nobody the, went there. The Grand Slam of the Australian <laughs> Open was the Forgotten Slam because That's it was right. played in December. That's right. The end of the year, players were tired, they were burned out, and they generally didn't go to the Australian Open. So it was almost all Australians. So I look at that and I see that she really didn't have a rival. She won a lot of these, these Grand Slams in Australia uh, at a time when professionals weren't playing. And it was not world players. It wasn't players from around the world playing. So I have to look at that and take that into consideration when I would consider her being the greatest of all time. Thoughts? I would agree with that. Yes. Yeah. So it's very obvious what happened there. But uh, it's all in the record books. Right. So she has those Grand Slams. Sure. And everybody's been chasing that forever. In the, in the woman's side. Right. But yes, the reality is there was a, that number that nobody went there. Right. right. So you got to take that into consideration, I would say, for sure. 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 Okay. Yeah. Um, we'll go on to somebody else then. Yeah. The big picture of maybe is important too is she won 192 singles titles. <laughs> that's, a, that's crazy. So, and I think as we talk about this, I think it's really important that we say right from the beginning here that. I have tremendous respect. How could I not have tremendous respect for all of these athletes? I mean, oh, yeah. unbelievable achievements, sure. unbelievable. Yeah. And you know, when we get to the end here and give you our opinion, it's just our opinion. Okay. That's all it is. So. Yeah. Okay. So let's let's compare uh, Margaret with with Serena a little bit here. So we all know Serena's at 23. She's been locked in to 23 since 2017, almost going on five years. It's getting harder and harder for her for for different reasons. But uh, 23 is a great accomplishment. Um, she's done it in the open era. She's done it in the modern era of tennis where there's better training, there's better athletes. Uh, the girls are, are quicker, stronger, faster, hit the ball harder than ever, right? Uh, competition getting stronger and stronger. Right. Yeah. Now, I don't think that she's had a tremendous, I don't, I don't think she's had a tremendous rival during this time because I think her greatest rival was Venus. Uh, but virtually, I mean, she had a 20, and two record against Maria Sharapova. <laughs> right. Right? Yeah. Um, and most of the girls she played that were that were her rivals, she she has winning records against them. No one was really challenging her that much, right? Yeah. 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 No one's challenged her. Yeah. So Serena's had a pretty good run without a whole lot of resistance for the most part. There's been some players that have come along and had peak, peak, peaks that have played really well. Kleisters was one. Hennon had had a you know, was doing great there early on before she was short at the end of her career though. Yeah. Um, but no one's been able to sustain against her, so she's had a pretty darn good, pretty darn good run. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. She's had a great run, and uh, this was the time, and it was uh, just the way the game went. And yeah. It wasn't the development the way it could have been. Sure. But, sure. Uh, and you know, in the 20 years she's been playing as well, over 20 years now. There's been so many, I don't have the exact stats, but there, I mean, there's been a lot of different players that have won a title or two. You know, I think about, uh, 
you know, Ivanovich won the one, won one and yeah. Schiavone won one. Yeah. And, um, you know, Kleister's won, I think, four, I think. four or five. Hennon won five. seven. Different players won one or two here and there. Um, uh, Simone Halep's won two. Um, this and that. Uh, uh, what's her name? From uh, Denmark, the Danish sunshine girl. Wozniacki. Yeah, Wozniacki. She won one. So yeah. a lot of players just won one. There's a lot of players just won two, but uh -huh. they never could sustain. No. Kavita won two. She won yeah. two Wimbledon. So, yeah. so Serena's had a pretty, she's been able to plow through these girls pretty easily. Yeah. Yeah. yeah if she's, was she on? She put one. If she was slightly off, right. it didn't, didn't happen. Right. Right. It was either one or the other. Right. And you didn't know which one was going to be. Right. Each time. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it was really interesting to watch. Yeah. Yeah. Other, other players we could talk about is uh, Steffi Groff. Steffi Groff won 22 Grand Slam singles titles, and she was a tremendous player, probably the quickest player yep. about the court. Had a big serve, had a big forehand, had a great slice backhand that drove the girls crazy. But, you know, and, and this other girl came along named Monica Sellis, and if Monica Sellis hadn't had the unfortunate incident in Germany uh, where she was stabbed, which is just unbelievable, that she, could have been an amazing rivalry between the two of them. Right. If they, if Sellers hadn't got injured, okay, if she hadn't been taken out of the way. Right. That happened there. And uh, I think it was just a, that just changed things. Right. But Sellers had, Sellers had Graf's number. She was yep. taking it to her for was, uh, a number of slams in a row. With two, down, two hands on both sides, it was unheard of. Took the ball so early. Yeah. yeah. She was just playing everything. Yeah, she was ruthless, and yeah. Groff really didn't have an answer for her. So, no. Steffi's numbers, you know, may have been different had had that not unfortunate incident occurred. Right? You never can, you never can tell, but uh, right. Right. it looked that it was going that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but uh, it didn't happen. Right. You know, another honorable mention is uh, Chris Everett. I think Chris Everett had a great career. She was had the most consistent record. She was the toughest to beat. She only missed the semifinals and Grand Slams like twice in her career. It's crazy. She won 18 Grand Slam singles titles. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't think that she's the greatest player, but she implicates, I think, my perspective on who the greatest player is because she had a tremendous rivalry with Martina Navratilova. Yeah. And in fact, Martina, that they played 80 times in their career and Martina won 43 and Chris won 37. But it was a tremendous rivalry. Um, it, if, if Chris Everett wasn't in the picture, I think Martina would record would have been wildly better, even crazy. She, you know, so Chris Everett implicated uh, Martina's results as, a, as, as well, which is yeah. very, very interesting. Absolutely. So, so you know, Chris was a great rival two for Martina. Types of styles. Oh yeah, one baseline or one attacking. Sure, sure. The game was. Uh, Who's going to be on and who's going to be playing right. with confidence and can you hang in there, keep going and maybe you win the match. Sure. But uh, it was a great rivalry. Right. It was really good. Yeah. I agree. But that thing, not the same as some of the others. Right. Right. And then the fifth and final player worth mentioning, I think, in this, in this conversation is Martina Navratilova. Yep. And Martina had an unbelievable career. Uh, she won 59 combined titles in Grand Slams. She won 18 singles titles. Um, let me pull the stats up here. I mean, crazy numbers. Not quite as big a numbers as, as Margaret Court, but Martina did play in the open era and she had a phenomenal rival with Chris Everett. So, you know, it was a little bit of a different, a, a different picture, it's but she won. Now. Martina oh. won 167 singles titles. <laughs> 177 yep. doubles titles Amazing. in her career. Crazy, right? Yep. And she won 59 Grand Slam titles. And what's so impressive is that she, 32 years lapsed between her first Grand Slam title and her last. She was two weeks shy of being 50 years old when she won her last Grand Slam title. I mean, come on, crazy, right? And the thing that I really appreciate about Martina is that when she came to the United States and she had defected out of, out of Czechoslovakia, she came to the United States, she was a, a, a good tennis player, but she wasn't a good athlete. She wasn't in any kind of shape. In fact, she was out of shape. And, oh yeah, we remember those days. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah, she was out of she shape. She changed herself into a, a total athlete. Yeah, and so what Martina did, which is different than all of these players, yeah. is she transformed herself. 
into really becoming one of the greatest women athletes in any sport ever. Yeah. And she really, she really not only transformed herself, but she transformed the game. She transformed the way other women players trained and practiced and got themselves in shape. And she even influenced many, many athletes outside of tennis to become fitter, stronger, better athletes. And she was had, you know, huge impacts on sports. Oh, huge. Yeah. Huge impact. Yeah, because you, I mean, you, you just have to look at the pictures and say, one like this and like this and how she accomplished all these. Of course he did, because he really put everything together Yeah, and it worked. Yeah. yeah the, other, the other thing I really uh, appreciate about Martina is that she had an all-court game. She could play successfully, you know, on clay. She could stay back and rally if she needed to. She could work the point. She loved to attack. She had attacking mentality, right. but she could also defend and she yep. had a full, complete set of skills. So, you know, for me, I think Martina and she had a big advantage being lefty too. And she was a lefty. Because there's hardly any lefties. That's right. <laughs> so, so that was a big advantage. And sure. To play with a serve with that kind of advantage was pretty awesome. Yeah. But yeah. For women's tennis anyway. So, you know, I look at Martina and Serena as my top two. I do. Look at that. And then if I compare the two of them and we say that get really get down to the nitty gritty, I'm going to lean uh, towards Martina. And the reason is, is that Serena has n not had to change her game or has not changed her game. She should have changed her game, but she never really adapted. And she, her game is the same now as it was 20 years ago. Big serve, bang, bang, ground strokes, not really a complete game, not really a serve and volley. You don't see her do that. She hasn't really adapted to the way the game has changed. And I, and I think the fact that she has gotten a little slower has, has hurt her a little bit. But the I girls think a are- lot, a, lot, a lot happened because of injuries. Though as well. She's yeah. had operations on the knees uh -huh. because I think she bends too much on the knees. And my opinion is if I got one injury in my knee, I'm not going to bend my knees down as far as that and get it again. Overbending. Yeah, overbending. It kept on coming. Overbending. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was, yeah. that should be in right there stopped. So, you know, yeah. like another key thing I think is that um, the girls are used to her power. When she first came on tour, she overpowered the girls, but most of the girls now are practicing with guys. So her serve, if she hits the spots at 120, the girls aren't going to get it back. But if they get it back, it's, it's now equal turf. The girls can handle her power. They can absorb the power. They're quicker than she is. And she hasn't adapted her skill set and her tactics to accommodate her lack of foot speed. She's lost a step or two. So she hasn't figured out how to, how to adjust her game so well, that that's, it's, that's, it's, that's it's, not a, a clearing uh, disadvantage. Yeah, they really because they to get all those pieces again and get the game plans because there's more than two game plans. There's sure. much more than that. Sure. Um, and you have to have the shots. Sure. You have to learn those. Uh, and it's going to take a while. Yeah. To put you, that together. You know, she, what she needed to do, in my opinion, is she needed to learn how to take time away from her opponents. And it, once, once you're at max power, you have to find other ways to do that. One way is to come to the net yourself. The other way is to bring them in. And if you think about the girls, think about anybody like Simona Halep. Do you think Simona Halep wants to be at the net and have Serena hitting passing shot there? No, but Serena never put herself in a position where she could be passing these girls because she didn't have the skills to bring them in. Yeah. Like, like you know, for example, the players do today. You know? yeah. Yeah. So we see a lot more drop shots. Yeah, whether, whether short shot to bring them in or just a, not even a good drop shot. Right. But if you play a good drop shot, then there's it's, it's over. Right. And see, Martina had this had the skills, the complete game and set of skills to do whatever she wanted to do on the court. So she would be able to adapt through the different changes and different different levels of tennis over time. Absolutely. So, so yeah. Martina's my pick. Who's your pick? Well, you bring up the question that I've I've always felt this way. That uh, Martina did more than any, anybody else. Okay. And the way she played and all the variations. That's what people should have been looking at more to develop. But yes, she was lefty. Okay, so we're lefty. There's a few lefties. Lefties could get better, and, but right-handers could have learned. And the game would have changed even sure. more. It would have been, sure. I think it could have developed more, even more instead of this, this baseline game of banging and hitting the balls yeah. all the time. Yeah. There's yeah. a lot more to this game and it's quite fascinating. And if you have those extra pieces, now it's an interesting game that you have the choices. And then how's your mental toughness with all this? Sure. 
How sure. do you make the right decisions at the right times? Yeah, and speaking of mental toughness, of course, we know that Serena, tremendous mental toughness. I yeah. give her the edge over Martina on that. I think Martina had a few a few instances where she just couldn't hold it together. Right. But, but anyway, that's, that, that's uh, Martina is my pick. Martina seems to be your pick as yeah. well. We want to know what your pick is. Please leave your comments down below. Give us a like if you've enjoyed this video. Um, it's intended to create interest and in, in conversation um, around this interesting time in, uh, in tennis history. So thanks for watching today's video. Yes, thanks for watching.